Well, hey, y'all. My name is Willie Lawson, and welcome to the Saxophone Factory. Uh, we are uh, taking a, a short break from some um, some playing videos uh, because I thought it important to ask the question, I mean, to answer the question, how do I choose a good teacher? Because I think that all of you who are watching and have been watching and have supported the channel, uh, my one of my suggestions is find a good local teacher. You know, I am I am pleased and honored that I've been able to start you or or, or rejuvenate your uh, your saxophone journey. I really am uh, because I, I think the more people, the more people who play, the the, the better it is. Uh, I am of the school of more voices, more voices, more voices, and I'm super happy that you are um playing again uh, especially if you stopped and if you're someone who is i don't know my age or so and you decided you know what i'm going to play the saxophone that's encouraging to me because your your guy here my dream is to um get his pilot his private pilot certificate um at 62 years old now raising the money for it that's <laughs> something else entirely different that's going to be a GoFundMe account, and I'm going to be hitting you up, uh, but I want to, and I don't see any reason not to. Uh, my vision is quickly to 2020. I don't want to fly an airliner. I just want to fly a Cessna 172, but that's not why I have you here today. Why I have you here today is how do you pick a good teacher? You know, there are a lot of people out there who say, especially on the internet, who say they can teach and then are willing to teach you. Oh, this is, oh, this is, oh, are you wearing what you wondering who this is let me let me let me, let me bring her on, on on camera uh hang on a second here you go this is this is tc hey hello tc good morning I woke her up Clout. you always wake her up uh, this is tc uh, tc is our the new addition to our family she is 12 and a half years old 12 and a half years old and uh we are we are enjoying having Miss TC in our house. She is fantastic. Anyway, um, how do you pick a good teacher? How do you pick a good teacher? There are three main things that you're going to have to think about. First of all, find a teacher that you have a connection with because that's important. Uh, where I teach, I teach all ages, really, I do. I have youngsters, um, kids who are on the autistic spectrum. Uh, I have adults. Uh, I have adult people who have been playing for a while. I have adult beginners. Uh, I have, again, high school students, middle school students. I believe that the connection is really important. Find a teacher, and when you talk to them, seem excited about teaching. Not just excited about having another student. That's, that's a different thing. Not that I'm not, I don't get excited about another student, but I get excited about teaching. I get excited about you learning, that you've shown up, that you decided to make this step, um, that you decided to start this journey. Find a teacher that, that you find that connection to. I think that that's extremely, extremely important um, to get that connection first. Okay. So you might want to visit your local music store or find someone who's a teacher and have a conversation or two about, you know, two, you know, you don't want to show up and waste their time, um, you know, when they can be teaching, obviously, because that's how they, you know, feed their family. Uh, but if you can find time to have a conversation with them and see if they're excited about teaching, not that they're, oh, I'm teaching because I'm in college and I need to make extra money and it was easy and, because there are teachers like that. There are people who are, who are teaching like that. Uh, I think that's that's really important. See, see if they're excited about teaching, not just having another student. Um, second thing for me, and of course, when you're an older person, you always think this thing's important, experience. And there's two kinds of experiences. There's experience playing, and there's experience teaching. And what, and what we've learned 
uh, over our life, if you're, you know, a more mature person like myself, is like those two things are not the same. The ability to do and the ability to teach are not the same thing. I'll say it again. The, abil the ability to do and the ability to teach are not the same thing. So you may go again. You may go to a you know to somewhere and and find this fantastic saxophone player and like wow, Jolly Parker and Kenny G and John Coltrane all in all in one person. You might, and you might you know get up your nerve to ask them you know, hey, listen, you do you teach? And that person may say yes but they may not be able to teach. They may not be able to because it's not the same skill set. It is not. Find somebody who has some experience playing because I think that that's, some, I think that playing, being able to play, especially in public uh, is important because that means that you're, that you're playing, your musicianship is at a certain level. Or was it a certain level? Because <laughs> the older you get, you're like, been a long time since I've been on a recording because it's because it's not what I do anymore. Um, find out and your first conversation in connections, find out what their experience level is playing. So where have you played? Have you been in a band? Um, do you write your own music? Uh, blah, blah, blah. What, and the second, and the second part about experience is teaching experience. Well, how long have you been teaching? How many students do you have? If a teacher has 75 students, they're not going to remember your name. They're just churning them out. They're just getting them in, getting them out. Why? Because bills, that's why. <laughs> bills, money, that's why. Uh, so you see that I'm, I'm not hating. I'm not. I understand that there's a reality here. There's some uh, things that are, you know, that are important. But we're talking about finding a good teacher for you. Find out how long they've been teaching. Third and final thing. Once you've taken some lessons, you need to find this person. If your teacher has the correct balance for you of patience and pushing. Patience and pushing. I tell people all the time, I am not patient. I just have learned that certain things take time, practice. If you're an adult, you have to find a teacher in this patience and pushing thing that knows that you have a life, that you have a job, that you have children, you have a spouse. You know, you've got other commitments other than sitting around practicing the saxophone for five hours a day. That's not, that may not be where you are. Even if you're retired, you know, you're not going to sit around and play the saxophone for five hours because maybe you have golf or maybe you have pickleball or maybe you have flying lessons. Maybe. So you need to find that, that teacher that has that right balance for you of patience, pushing. That's important. That is, I have found, especially with adults, that's, that's very, very important. That's more important than with, with kids, frankly. Because you can have a lot less patience with kids. Because the 14-year-old doesn't have a job. The 14-year-old um, doesn't have a spouse. I hope not anyway. Uh, the 14-year-old doesn't, you know, doesn't have the same level of responsibility in their life that a 40-year-old has. So if they're not, you know, th they're not progressing, it's because they're not putting in time normally. Not always, but normally it's because they're not putting in time. This is TC down here. Um, that perfect balance of patience and pushing. So when I have a student that, that comes in and goes, well, Willie, you know, I, I really didn't get on the saxophone this week and I, I, had a, I had a business meeting out of town uh, and I was in uh, uh, Bora Bora all week, uh, you know, for business. And I really didn't get to it. You know, I can't, can't, I, I can't get all dark about that. It's like, I understand, get to work. You gotta work, you know? Because we're all just trying to eat every day and, and, and live indoors. I got you. Um, so you need to find those three things. That connection 
Are they excited about teaching? Not just excited about having another student, but are they excited about teaching? Do they really like it? Two, two A and two B. Experience in playing. What's their experience as a, as a as a musician? Um, and their experience teaching. Three, the balance. Of, we'll call it the balance between patience and pushing. I, you know, you don't want to come in here every week and be awful and, and don't feel like you're making any progress. So it's up to me as a teacher to kind of know where to push you a little bit. I'm not going to play exercise two for seven weeks. I'm going to push you to three and four. You may be out of your comfort level, but you know what? I, you got to get it done somewhere, right? I hope that these tips help you find a good local teacher. You know, there are a lot of great advice. There's a lot of great saxophone advice here on YouTube for sure. Um, Jay Metcalf and, you know what, and Professor Wally. Uh, and, and, and there's a couple more, but those are my two favorite. Those are my two go-to guys, Better Sax and the Saxophone Academy. Um, good good material, good guys, good approach. I, I, you know, I like both of them uh, a lot. Uh, and I wish I had the production value of either of them <laughs> or the experience of either of them, really. But um, I really think that um, having a teacher sit down, sit down next to you and being able to look at your embouchure, to look at your hand position, make those small corrections to make sure that you can play for a long time and you can play well for a long time is much more valuable than anything that you can find online. Anything that you can find online. Even me. Well, in any case, y'all take care. Um, again, my name is Willie Lawson of the Saxophone Factory. Um, until we see you again, keep playing. Keep playing. Watch for that GoFundMe for my flight lesson. <laughs>